All right. Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome out to your currency midweek update. This is Ankit, and I'll be uh, I'll be taking you through this uh, FOMC uh, rate decision that's uh, coming ahead in just about thirty minutes, less than thirty minutes. So there's a lot to talk about, and if you have any questions, uh, as always, type in the chat box. We'll take it as we go, and let's begin and take a look at markets. Uh, before we start, just make sure that you're doing your due diligence. I will have my two cents on what I think, but again, that's not uh, something that will happen. But you know, as as a trader, you always want to make sure that you are following your trading plan and and, and approaching these um, these press conferences accordingly. So, let's start with the outlook so far. What we've seen in the markets and the equity markets have rallied going into this decision. So. Overall, if we take a look at this market, we are range bound. We are in between this 3800 to 4100 on S&P 500. So the markets are not looking as bearish, but they're not looking as bullish either. I think we're stuck within that range and market has rallied a uh, decent about 2% so far this week. So the momentum is, is positive going into this announcement. The On the other hand, the US dollar, that's flat ahead of this uh, the decision here. So um, we are not really seeing uh, much of that price action in the dollar, which is telling me we'll probably have a better price action after the news event. So one of the things that we talked about in the past two weeks as the uh, bond markets was uh, going crazy. I mean, we've seen bond markets moving erratically and we have seen a lot of uh, expectation coming down and maybe talking about rate cuts. And now we're seeing it sort of uh, stabilizing those uh, th those yields over here. So as we're going to this event, the yields are rising and the gold's pulling back. But again, this is just an aftermath of the massive moves that have taken place in the last two weeks. Um, all eyes are really on the future guidance here. And on the same note, currencies are uh, still range bound. I mean, we have seen a decent price action out of the euro. But I think outside of that, if I take a look at most of the currencies, they are not advancing or declining. Uh, if you're if you're a trend trader, you're not really getting a good trending score. As far as the economic reports go this week, I mean, we have seen Canadian uh, CPI that was a uh, you know kind of mixed uh, overall. It was uh, 0 0.4 versus 0 0.5. Again, didn't see any sort of fireworks from the Canadian dollar. Remember, we see big movements when there's a surprise. And talking about surprise, we had the British pound that really surprised traders because we've seen an uptick in the uh, the, the inflation rate. So this is again, uh, we have seen uh, four months of declining inflation, and boom, we see a jump here. So the pound is something we need to watch in the next coming uh, 24 to 48 hours as we go into the next Bank of England rate statement. Now the chances have gone up for them to raise rates. So uh, this is again, this is a second. Uh, country that we are seeing the uptick in the inflation rate. If you take a look at Switzerland, we had the uptick in the CPI there. Uh, not really seeing an uptick uh, as much out of the US and Canada, but definitely seeing in the other parts of the, uh, the countries here. So let's take a look at performance so far. As you can see a good number so far. I mean, oil is up 6%. Again, just recovering half of its loss that we saw last week, about 13%. We see equity markets rally up 2%, again, recovering uh, some of the losses that we have seen in the last week as well. So the crypto markets is really that's just hanging in there. I'm definitely surprised to see how resilient cryptos has been, but maybe after today we'll have a better idea where the crypto is heading. Um, but outside of that, um, decent decent uh, numbers going into this uh, today's event. So as we uh, take a look at the uh, the currency markets here, one of the things you notice is that we are seeing a better sort of price action coming in from the euro. And this is, again, weekly gain. So you can see that the euro has done so far uh, much better against everything else. So something we need to uh, pay attention to. A lot of the euro crosses actually looks really good here for further continuation if we have further upside on this. Outside of that, you can see that the dollar and the yen 
just sitting right in this very small range. Remember, these are two correlated. Uh, uh, right now, the correlation between those two currencies are uh, negative. So one goes up and one goes down. So uh, this is one of the pairs that we'll be paying attention to today. Um, another big surprise this week so far has been in the Kiwi. I mean, Kiwi last week was one of the more resilient currency. So going to this week, the outlook was definitely on the upside. And definitely this last two days has been more on to the negative side here. So today we are seeing prices stabilizing a little bit, but we are seeing this you know, lack of that consistency uh, in this price action here. You know, something looks really good here, but then that doesn't really follow through. Um, so the Kiwi was one of the currencies. Outside of that, CAD is flat for the week. Aussie is slightly down. So nothing really percentage-wise except the Euro and the Kiwi. And that's really where the biggest move that we have seen so far this week. So let's pay attention to Euro, not just against the Kiwi, but against other currency pairs even like Swiss franc, dollar, or even the yen. Now, let's take a look at the crypto world. As you can see, that very mixed uh, price action here in the cryptos. Uh, Bitcoin staying resilient. I mean, we are seeing Bitcoin acting really, uh, you know, really as a strong currency, very shallow pullbacks. Uh, so I think this is where the money is flowing into. But you can see Bitcoin cash down. Litecoin has been in a roller coaster ride, but they all are underperforming the Bitcoin. So it seems like that is the where the money is flowing into. And if that Bitcoin start to fall, I wouldn't be surprised if all the other cryptos kind of take a fall as well. So uh, outside, I, I think uh, so far cryptos, I would be uh, more interested to see what happens in the next uh, in ne in next couple of days because so far we have seen massive gains, but we are just holding on to the gains. So now looking at the market outlook, we're sitting at a plus one, but at the same time, if you take a look at the price action, this is a sideways price action. So if you look at the moving averages, you know, in a trending market, you get a very nice moving averages that helps you and guide you which way the price action is heading. Whenever you get this, this is this is a, a tough one because if you're to a trend trader, you're trying to build a position looking for uh, something that builds over time. But you can see that this is not really going anywhere, which means that your timeline for trades has to be shorter term. We just want to follow momentum. You can see in the shorter term, momentum is on the upside. But moving averages, it's a crisscross here, not a, not a strong indication. So I will be looking at primarily this uh, resistance level and the support level. Until we break one way or the other, I will be able to uh, increase one of the trend scores. But right now, the trend score is not there. So I'm mostly relying on velocity here, which means that looking at the price action on a day-to-day -day basis and there's opportunities in between. Now, looking at um, you know, looking at the uh, world stock index, we're seeing the very similar thing. You can see that world stock index is going nowhere at the same time. So after this whole banking, regional banking collapse in the last two weeks, market seems to stabilize a little bit here. So we're not really seeing that much fear that we had in the last two weeks as the Fed has come in and backstopped a lot of things. But again, with the with the FOMC ahead today, that could change very quickly as well. Especially um, as as the Fed is trying to find a middle ground, keeping both sides happy. They're fighting um, this stability in the financial markets versus the inflation. So it's a this is why this is not it's one of those toughest um, uh, FOMC decisions this week because. You know, there's no easy way out, and we have to see how the the uh, the Fetcher Powell can find a middle ground there without really, you know, crashing the markets or you know creating a big rally in the markets because again, that would go against the inflation. So that's where we are in the markets, and let's talk about cryptos. And this is where I have a lot of questions. Hey, crypto's looking good. Should I just buy here? I think collectively a Bitcoin chart looks the best. But if you take a look at the chart from uh, the collectively, you know, they're not clearing up yet. So which means that we have this strong resistance to break out. This price action looks very similar to what we had here. But you can see that that did not last into a big breakout that eventually failed. So would that, would that be the same case this time? Time will tell. So let's take a look at the schedule here, and this is what we have uh, in front of us. We have the uh, the Fed rate statement that's you know due at 2 p.m. and followed by the press conference. So usually, uh, you know, we see a two-part trade here because 
sometimes you know we get we get a nice little movement here at 2 p.m. but that can quickly get erased with the press conference so I personally like it better to trade after the press conference because the whatever we can build in the race statement um, you know that might not last so this is why the next uh, the 30 minutes 30 to 40 minutes you know are very crucial because that's where we see a big gains and losses not a lot of times we see something move and just holds those gains we see a lot of uh, back and forth so I personally think that they will be a better trade you know past this uh, this news event and the press conference. So I won't be looking at trade to enter at two. I think this is more uh, already baked in with the expectation they'll be raising 25 basis points. Uh, what we'll be uh, interested to see at 2 p.m. Will, will be the economic projections. We'll be getting the dot plot. What are they expecting for further rate hikes? Uh, and then followed by the press conference. I think that will be more market moving. In between, if you're looking at a shorter term trade, I'm sure there will be a trade there. But if you're looking to build something and hold into FOMC, um, I think that would be a very tough trade. Now, we we still have a lot to, to go through tomorrow and uh, Friday. Uh, again, Thursday, we have two central bank announcements. I'll be paying close attention to this Frank as well, because again, uh, coming off from this recent crisis, um, what does the uh, Swiss bank has to say? Uh, we'll have a better, uh, better outlook on where the Swiss Frank is heading in the near future. They're expected to raise rates by 50 basis points, but remember, this is already baked in. That now it's all about what is the uh, what is the outlook going forward. Now, looking at the uh, Bank of England, again, same thing, looking for a raising rates by 25 basis points. But, yeah, same thing, Ex uh, looking for expectation and see um, see where, where we'll be heading in the next uh, next coming uh, months here. And then followed by, we have the uh, the Manufacturing and Services PMI out of out of Eurozone, out of, out of Pound, and out of the U.S. So Friday is, again, an important day. So starting today, I definitely like the markets much better um, with, with these news uh, that's on the docket ahead. So let's do a quick currency analysis. Let's jump. Let's take a look at markets because there's a lot, you know, take a look at. So first thing first, let's take a look at the Fed watch tool. Let's see what the expectation is. And you can see as I refresh this page, the expectation to raise rates by 25 basis points is 83.4%, which means that the majority expect this. Nobody's expecting uh, a 5 uh, or 50 basis point, which was the case just two weeks ago. That changed very quickly. Um, and there's a small little camp here that expects no rate hike. I personally think that they will raise rate by 25 basis points, but might go to data dependent uh, for further rate hikes. Uh, again, this is a very, uh, very difficult situation to not let the markets go haywire either way. You know, market wants to keep things under check and without damaging much uh, of their goals to control inflation at the same time, calm the markets, keep things stable as well. Now, taking a look at the yield inversion, I know Corey has talked about this many times, uh, but you can see that the yields have inverted, and I mean, we're almost coming uh, into this area that, you know, we have been extended for very long periods. So what the history tells us that every time we are so inverted, you know, eventually the rates will stop, you know, going up, and we'll start to see uh, sort, of, sort of a reversion of this. Uh, we are still not seeing that. I mean, we have been inverted for the longest time, which is, again, recessionary. And that's really what the uh, sort of uh, hesitation in the markets is the recession fear. So remember, if the Fed doesn't make changes or they cut rates, they're cutting for a reason. And I think that's that that's usually a pivot in the markets where we start to see uh, more pain coming ahead. So right now, uh, in the last two weeks, I think market got ahead of itself where it start to misprice or start to uh, kind of get ahead of its, uh, itself and expecting further rate cuts this year. So if you take a look at the two-year bond yields, this is the one that we need to pay attention to. Look at the bond yields. So we have been above this 200 moving average for the most part since September 2021. You can see that we tested this area and there has been a lot of back and forth. So the volatility in the bond market has been pretty pretty high. So right now you can see we are back in line with the expectation where we were, which means that you know we had a lot of uh, hawkishness over here. 
Uh, that has come down, but then we are not really being as as uh, dovish here either. So I think this will come down to what the Fed has to say. Uh, that would you know guide the bond markets, the bond yields, and that will be in a good indication on you know where where the stock markets will, will lead and where the U.S. dollar will lead. Now let's take a look at the dollar. So you can see the dollar right now is not really going anywhere, which means that it can really swing both ways. So if you take a look at the uh, the numbers here and the uh, since the February lows, we have rallied very nicely here on the dollar, and we are actually just midpoint right now. So if you do the Fibonacci retracement, we're sitting at a 50% retracement here, which means markets, the dollar can actually go bearish and go bullish. Again, this is the deciding place here where it just doesn't know which way, which way to go. But if we do break this support area, I would rather like dollar to the short side. If we, if we start to climb up and maybe get towards this upper area, then we want to be looking at dollar to the long side. But right now, if you want to talk about expectation, I'm right in the middle because that's what the dollar is telling me. So if you're trying to, uh, you know, make a guess that, OK, I think the dollars will rise. That is a flip of a coin here. Again, there's not a whole lot of statistics you can kind of put behind. Um, this is a flip of the coin here. Either you're going to be right or you're going to be wrong. That's a 50, 50 percent chance. I don't really like those trades where I just don't have, you know, a, a good odds in my favor right now. It's just. 50-50. So uh, if you look at the last few uh, FOMC events, one of the things you'll notice is that, you know, not just the event, but we actually get a better price action following that event. You can see that in this case over here, we had in December, we had a little movement here, but then after that, we got a nice little move here. Same thing goes in February 1st. We had a down move, but you can see after that, we only had dollar to the upside. Now, again, going back to last year as well, we have seen the same phenomena where there's a, definitely a lot of volatility when this happens, but then leading up to it, later on, we have a better uh, price action. So if you look at the uh, the entire last 12 months of FOMC, you know, it doesn't matter they raise rates. Uh, it really hasn't had a big bearing on, you know, deciding factor what the dollar is going to do. We have seen dollar rise on the news and then just fall right after and then in this case, we have seen uh, dollar fall on the news and rise after. So there's definitely a lot of back and forth. And you just have to kind of wait and see which way the market is telling you uh, as far as the confirmation goes. That's why I like the dollar right now on a second stage entry. I don't like it on a first stage entry because on a first stage entry, I'm just flipping the coin here. I want to have a little bit more confirmation clarity on where things are going. Because that's that's really where the big money is. You know, when you call or get behind a direction, I mean, look at the dollar here. It was a great uh, period to be long the dollar for the entire month. Of course, that has come back. But again, you want to be trading with that direction. That's where the big movement comes. Now, let's, uh, let's take a look at other uh, currencies one by one and then see which currency we want to be focusing on outside of the dollar, which pairings you want to be looking at. So if you have any questions, any pairings that you're looking at, just type in the chat box. We've got 10 more minutes before the Fed uh, rate uh, comes out, and we'll kind of take a look at it from there, from there on. So let's just start with the dollar. So we already looked at dollar. Let's take a look at yen. So I had a lot of questions on yen because the way yen is moving is a lot different than what we have seen in the recent months. I mean, last year, I mean, you can see the the yen was so resilient uh, to the downside, and and doesn't matter what kind of risk off mm -hmm. event was taking place, it just falling apart. You can see this; it just kept moving lower. Now it is actually acting as uh, or reacting to more of the risk on or risk off sentiment. So if you overlay this with the S and P five hundred. Let's actually uh, take a look at US 500. You'll notice that it is moving along the lines of what this uh, the markets are doing. So when we see, uh, you know, the markets, uh, the market picks up. As you can see, when the markets are dropping here, right, right, this movement here, the yen kind of picked up. As the market is rallying here, yen is moving lower. So there's a lot of back and forth happening because that's what's really going on in the equity markets. We see some big pumps as the market falls. We see yen rise. And when the market rise, the yen start to fall. 
So you're pretty much trading the equity markets or uh, if you're trading the yen here. So be careful with the yen because it just it's just moving along with the markets. So as we go into this, um, I will be taking a look at uh, the dollar yen uh, primarily because one of the things that we have seen is that if the dollar does well, the yen suffers. If the dollar does poorly, yen rallies. So it's a pretty clear uh, decisive uh, price action here. I mean, right now, as you can see, we are still, you know, sitting at the support. We broke out of this downtrend. I mean, this is uh, this is where you can say that we were in this downtrend. We had made it a higher high. Now we're making a higher low. But in the same time, we haven't really reversed it yet. So this is still under pressure here. Um, I would be more uh, bearish on this dollar yen if it breaks that 128. But you can see that this thing is between trading between these ranges. It almost hits 138 before reversing to 132. So it has a lot more ground to cover, and the stop on the downside is 127. These are wide ranges. So if you're trying to figure out which way the dollar is going, I think uh, pay attention to dollar yen because that will kind of help on uh, the outlook uh, or uh, you know which currency pairs you want to pick so let's uh, move out of the dollar in the end take a look at euro because outside of those two this is the one that is looking the best right now i mean look at the daily chart after all that uh, collapse that we saw out of the uh with the credit suisse i mean you can see we have almost recovered those uh losses we are making new highs and all charts actually looking very bullish uh this is a 12-hour chart four hour chart pull back back to the highs here every pullback is getting bought out which is a good sign you can see in the last uh, in the last 24 hours we saw a pullback here but then we are back to the back to the highs here so again this is again telling us that euro is strong so that will be going as a plus one or a plus two now look at the Swiss franc is it the same case with Swiss franc I personally don't love the Swiss franc right now I've talked about it because this was in a wide range in Swiss franc. We broke out, we fell apart, and then we had a nice little rally yesterday, and now we're just not going anywhere. So really looking at the comparison between the euro and the Swiss franc, let's take a look at what the euro Swiss franc pairing is telling us. And this is one of the pairing that I talked about earlier this week as a potential long, because again, this is something that has been below that parity level for longer time. And I would be, I, I think I really like this price action further up to the upside if it breaks above that 101 area. This is again playing relative strength and weakness. I do like Euro more than the Swiss franc here. Now let's go into the pound because pound was a, a bit of a all over the place because it had a rally, but you can see that it did pull back. You know, it's not really going anywhere. So I'm going to put the pound on shelf right now and come back to it later. Let's see, look at Canadian dollar. Well, Canadian dollar is looking a lot weaker. And interestingly, you know, the dollar, if you take a look at the dollar, dollar has been sitting at that 50% um, sort of retracement. This The Canadian dollar has fallen all the way back down. So again, this is showing me that the CAT is more weaker than the US dollar. Uh, let's take a look at the longer term chart. Weekly chart, we're sitting at that 200 moving average. So if it falls below that, there's definitely more downside. But the question is, can we break that low? Because a lot of times we have come to the low here, and each time it comes lower, it rallies. So this is, again, also a good example of a range-bound price action, which means it's not really moving, and we don't know how long this will consolidate before it can you know, seek a direction. So let's uh, put the CAD in the middle there to a minus 1. Now, Aussie. Look at the uh, look at the messy price action in the Aussie here. So Aussie overall still looking very weak. I mean, look at the uh, candlestick here. It hasn't been the the most easiest currency to trade because uh, because of the indecisions that we're getting on a day to day basis. Um, a lot of wicks. So right now this is just making a low base, it's trading sideways to the lower side. So this is not looking a good long either. And lastly, the Kiwi. And the key was a tough one as well because, again, we almost wanted to break above this area in the last two days, just got us right below uh, testing the support. And here we are catching a bounce. I do like uh, Kiwi on the short side if it breaks that support, but again, it's the same question 
can it break that support or is it just going to stay sideways and remember it's sideways is not it's not bad to trade sideways move you just have to have the right strategy to trade it the problem is that when we start to trade a sideways price action with uh, a directional move or a directional price action with a sideways move you know you have to make sure you're using the right strategy for it right expectation for it and you can see right now um, as soon as it hit the support it did start to rally here a little bit so again kb another currency that's not going anywhere so as we look at all these currency pairs the euro is the one that really stand out the most to me now let's take a look at what currency pairs that everyone's taking a look at let's start with the euro dollar I do like euro dollar absolutely on the long side is if this um, if, if the dollar actually weakens after this uh, Fed report so where do I want to get long it's sitting at 108 right now you can see the support is a 200 moving average or the 50 day moving average is right here the 20 day moving average is right here so the the resistance is at about 110 so there's still 200 pip on the upside before it hit that resistance uh, the question is what time frame you want to be jumping in on and when would you want to be jumping on so i personally don't like you know jumping on anything right now what i want to see is a, a, you know a price action where we get the whatever candle we get up or down we let the market uh, digest that we get the uh, the fomc and whichever way we get a clarity after that i do again if the dollar weakens i like that to compare against the euro so that's definitely the the top trade um, that I will be looking at. On the other hand, I see that there's other trades uh, like pound dollar. Let's take a look at pound dollar. And you can see pound dollar. Yeah, it did pull back, but it's 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 testing. It's still above the moving average here. So again, this will be a trade I will be looking at. Is if let's say if the dollar is weak today and we go into the Bank of England tomorrow. Maybe this is the pair that I'll be paying attention to. But as of right now, I'm not really interested in pound. I think if I have to compare, the, the euro looks better than the pound. All right, I have other questions here. Let's see, Kiwi says Frank. Well, again, uh, the question is, this, is this the right time to take a look at Kiwi says Frank? Um, or any Swiss franc crosses. Let's say if the growth currencies rallies and the Swiss franc remains weak, then I do like a lot of the Swiss franc pairs because I think they have been sitting at very good levels on the low side here and has a nice recovery to it. But again, that would be if the um, if the um, growth currencies can rally. But right now, we're not really seeing a big rally in growth currencies. So just be uh, cautiously bullish on it uh, until we get good confirmation. If you take a look at the chart, we are still below this uh, area that we broke, uh, 58. I think if it gets above that 58, gets above the moving averages, I do like that. All right, so we are a few seconds away um, from this, from the uh, from the uh, Fed rate decision. So let's uh, let's uh, do a split screen here and take a look at two different things right now. So on the left side, let's put the equity markets. On the right side. Actually, let's take a look at the yields because that's very important what the yield is going to do. And maybe we can add another third column and take a look at. All right, let's two two is enough. And we'll, we'll take a look at the dollar as well in between. So the big question is what, what happens with these. So let's say uh, what the initial price action is. Let's look at a shorter term chart in a 15 minute. Maybe go down to a. A five minute chart all right so so far nothing so <laughs> again I'm not a surprise because if this is in line with expectation then we don't expect a big move so let's take a look at the uh, yeah so they did come out raise rates by um, 25 basis points so as expected the dollar uh, the equity market is rising and the yields are falling now, what the dollar is doing? Well, dollar is pulling back as well. Let's let's check on the right hand side here. Um, the U.S. dollar is down again, not with the. It's, it's only down by 0.3 percent, but initial price action is to the downside. Now the question is that can the markets hold on to these levels? Like, how many times can you kind of go back and say, well, I saw this initially, I entered. And when the Fed chairs start to speak, and then that totally reversed. 
And I'm sure that if you look at the numbers, that would be most of that time. So that's why, as exciting this is, I personally like to you know enter when there's just less of this uh, headaches because again, sometimes you get a rush, but there's no guarantee that this will last. So it's always important to enter with confirmation. What is, what's going to happen in the next 20 to 48 hours? That's what I'm more interested in instead of what's going to happen in the next 30, 40 minutes. So the equity markets are already bullish. So we are getting a just a, a price action that's just moving to the upside. But you can see we already have quite a few, quite a bit of gains that are built in. Now, looking at the dollar, remember we talked about dollar and said, well, the dollar is sitting at the midpoint. So what I want to see is dollar actually breaks lower and stays below that because that will give me a confirmation that, yes, the uh, the dollar is actually breaking lower. But right now, we are seeing a pretty typical price action. It's just nothing has really jumped out to me um, as, a, as, a, as a very strong buy or a sell. I mean, if you look at the equity markets, we are, you know, like I said, we, we still, we're getting closer towards the upper end of the range, but we still have a lot of, you know, ground to be covered uh, both ways. Same thing with the dollar. It's staying weak, but the question is, is the right time to enter? And let's take a look at the pairs that we were looking at, your USD. So you can see that your USD was sitting at 108 and it went up to 108.30. So it's only a 30 pip move. It's not a a, a huge move that uh, you know that you would feel like yo you missed out on it. <laughs> I would I would rather miss out on a 30 pip to make the next you know 100 pip without without much of that hassle. All right, so it looks like a lot of us are on the same page. Um, I'll, I'll go through some other questions that uh, that I see here against the euro cad and the pound cad. Um, but again, that would be mostly what the cat's going to do. Let's see uh, what the cat is doing right now. And again, cat is also staying weak. But like I said, I would rather be looking for a confirmation before it breaks lower. So right now, the focus is really on the dollar. That's that's really where the focus is. And based on that, we'll have a better idea what other currencies are doing. Because right now, we're noticing uh, the Kiwi actually is one of the best currencies today so far and right here kiwi on the hourly chart you can see that kiwi is rising here a little bit so it does have a lot of ground cover based on what it has lost so far this week but uh, what we have here is that initial candle so i i would rather want to see this candle uh sort of finish and give me a confirmation uh, on where it's leading to. So for the next hour, uh, till the Fed chair comes out and starts speaking about the economy and their, uh, you know, go through the uh, questionnaire, uh, the uh, we'll, we'll probably have a better idea. Uh, what what's the outlook here in the long term? All right. So let's uh, sort of sum it up here because from here on we got the price action, but from now until two thirty. We have markets likely to just digest the news because, again, uh, not everyone is uh, totally bought or sold on what was expected. What's really big is what the how the Fed chair position and you know goes through the Q the, uh, the Q and A and talk about the economy and their uh, fight to uh, fight inflation. So bond yields, I'm assuming that it is coming coming down because again the expectation for the bond yields so if you really want to pay attention to what the what's really going with the markets i think pay attention to the bond yields um you can see the last few days have been very much uh back and forth but i mean look at the 200 the 200 moving average if this can be get below that i think then we have a, a much better chance for dollar to much fall further um and the uh, the markets to rise far higher uh, right now, just sitting right in the middle here. Look at the hourly chart. We did um, we did go lower, uh, but we just really not sitting at the lows of that candle here. So again, um, we when we hear from uh, Fetch Your Pal, we'll have an idea if they will be, you know, uh, data dependent. They'll be holding on to their 
the outlook and continue raising rates? Is it a dovish outlook or is it bullish outlook? That's really what's going to guide the yields and the dollar. So it's still a little early to really make that call here. So th the dollar has weakened nicely here, down 0.66%. Um, again, now we can see that we are breaking the support. We get it. We're closer to this 50-day uh, moving average, but once we can get below this moving average, I I do like this further on to the short side. And as we discussed earlier, what we want to be pairing is the dollar. That's one that I'll be paying attention to. And so we, if you can see that, we got a nice little move here. If you're looking for an entry, I would love to see some sort of pullbacks to buy into. But you can see that so far. Uh, where we were sitting at was right at the top of that. So uh, we don't want to be entering something that, that looks uh, right at the top end of that channel. So initial breakout we missed. It's okay. We're looking for a, a follow through. Where is the target? If we can get above it, you can see that this can easily get towards that 110 level. So let's take a look at other pairs that I requested here. A Euro CAD. Beautiful chart. Uh, again, on a weekly time frame, a lot of these euro crosses are looking amazing here. So, so good job on that one. Uh, I know last time you had the same question. Hopefully, you're still in that trade. Uh, but yeah, euro cat, I do like it upside. Uh, just in general, I like euro on the upside here. So again, this is where if you have a better idea what the euro is doing, um, you know, we can spread out the risk as well and and look at all the other euro crosses. Like I said, like I think my next one is euro swiss franc that i'm paying close attention to uh so maybe tomorrow when we get a better price action from switzerland uh with the uh with their race statement and then see if this can reclaim that one that parity level and if it does i think it has a lot more room to kind of uh, recover here as it gets towards that 104 area as the next level of resistance but again that will be till tomorrow but if you look at the price action it looks 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 very nice here all right, let's take a look at the dollar yen. So what the dollar yen is doing, as uh, we expect, the dollar pulls back. And let's take a look at the yen. I'm, I'm, I won't be surprised if the yen went higher. So there you go. So this is where I personally, if, if you think the dollar is going lower, then we don't want to be going short um, the yen. I think then we just have that the opposite of that you know movement there. So you can see that we are getting some wicks here uh, after moving lower. It's, it's retracing a little bit here. So what we are getting is the high and the low of that candle. So that's what we want to be looking at. Um, if you are, again, looking to enter trade off the Fetch Your Powell speech, again, look for these levels. Uh, once those levels clear up, I think you will have a, a, a really good trade in the next 24 to 48 hours if we get a, a continuation off of that. If you are already in a trade, like if you're in the EuroCAD, again, there's nothing telling me that it's ready to roll over yet. So we're looking for where is the next big trade. And I think that's, that's really where we are at. Um, we're right in the middle here. Like I said, um, dollar yen would be the one that maybe have a much more uh, downside risk here but again right now as you can see that we are recovering here again this is where you know sometimes you get a candlestick like this and the next candlestick get us right above so that's why i want everyone to be right in the middle here there's no rush um this is a flip of the coin here things can change very fast but look beyond today where the follow through is, I think we'll have a much better price action uh, for the next 24 to 48 hours. So that's the outlook here. Um, we we'll want to be playing it safe here. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other currency pairs like uh, Aussie dollar. Well, let's take a look at the Aussie dollar. On a daily chart, you can see that it's recovering. It did break the support and then it's recovering a little bit here. So I don't like it long unless it breaks above the 6735, 6750 area. There's some resistance right here about 67, 69. But I think once we clear this area, then there's better smooth sailing after that. So you always need to kind of pay attention to these congestion zones because that's where we see those pauses. I mean, if you are, a, you know, in a trade that is just running and running, you know, the, those are the trades like EuroCAD. Like these are the trades that last longer because 
you know, you're, you're, there's not a whole lot of resistance to stop it. So it just continues to move in that direction. But when you have a lot of overhead resistance, um, that makes it a little bit difficult. It's the same example as zero versus franc. I like it on the upside, but there's a lot of overhead resistance. Once it clears that resistance, then then you have a green light to jump on that trade because then you have a better chance for that to advance versus uh, how much it's going to pull back. But until then, things can stay sideways for long periods of time. And uh, yeah, and uh, if you try to play that uh, a sideways range directionally, that's where your losses comes because you know you're trying to look for a breakout here and there, and it's just not happening. So. Um, I always uh, recommend, you know, look at the trend score. If the trend score is not strong, it's just a plus one and minus one. That means that, you know, you want to stay right in the middle there. If you have a plus two and a plus three, then you want to stay one way, which means that I only want to play it on the upside or I only want to play it on the downside. But when something is right in the middle there, then, it, you know, you can have a good good uh, short-term trade on the upside and then you can have a good short-term trade on the downside. You can, tr you can trade both ways. So you can see that right now we're getting a lot of wicks. I look at the uh, Kiwi. Kiwi did break out and just pulling back right there. Aussie breaking out. And then I think Aussie's holding a, gains a little bit better here. CAD, it did uh, break lower. But again, remember the support is right here. So this is the area that I'm weary about because I think this, this is the areas where it can have a short-term reversals as well. The British Pound... On a 15-minute chart, it's not really going anywhere. Again, we'll, we'll, we'll look at pound tomorrow. Uh, Swiss franc, not really going anywhere. And the euro. Euro is the one that is breaking out. So only two currencies that is looking good to the upside is the euro and is the Aussie. But overall, euro the, uh, looks the best here. Now, Japanese yen, you can see it did rally and then pulling back. The reason why it's pulling back because the dollar is reversing. So you can see it's a tough trade if you're trying to capture anything between the dollar and the yen. Um, I will be again w looking forward to the 2:30 when the Fed chairs start to speak, and after that we'll have a better idea which way they're planning on, uh, you know, guiding these uh, rates in the markets. So uh, give us a better conclusion there. So focus on currency. In play can emphasize enough on this um, you know with these mar market conditions you know if you just follow what's moving in rather than finding a best setup I mean that's a, definitely a better route because you can avoid a lot of those trades that just doesn't go anywhere but at the same time you have the opportunity cost where you miss out on other good trades that are taking place uh, make sure you have a proper position sizing and trade velocity I mean when the trend sc uh, scores are not as strong make sure then you're trading the velocity so that's the game plan. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. Um, and hopefully we'll have a better uh, clarity on this after, uh, after the uh, press conference here. So stay tuned uh, and stay patient. Remember, patience is the name of the game here. Thanks, thanks everyone for joining. Have a good rest of the day. Cheers.